See that? What are you supposed to do when she comes in and she needs you to help her, but you have no idea what's under all of that hair color? You have no, you know she's lying to you. What do you do? How do you make sure that you deliver consistent results every time? What, how, do you, how do you avoid putting yourself at risk? Because you just don't know what's under all that. I pray to the color gods first. It's always good. <laughs> Um, no, I think I, more, more prayers have been said at the shampoo bowl than anywhere else. Yeah, go back, look at all the color tubes, pray, okay, we're going to get through this. No, I think I, the biggest thing for me is consultation. You really need to ask a lot of questions. What do you like about your hair? What have you done to your hair? What don't you like about your hair? I love you ladies, but it's interesting when you say what do you like about your hair, you'll tell me this much. When you, I ask what you don't like about your hair, you're going to tell me this much. So ask lots of questions. The other thing in the consultation for me is honesty. You really need to be honest with them and you know if they have six layers of you know one end box color we're not going to get you to blonde today and you need to just be realistic and honest with them and say i can get you 100 percent in the right direction but you're not going to be 100 percent where i want to get you and i think that you know as they layer color on top we need to think of it as pulling it away as well so i wouldn't want to do that in one day because i, I you know the integrity of the hair is the most important thing I can do the greatest hair color of my life, but if the hair's not integrous when it's done, it really doesn't make sense. I see you putting pictures up here. You put some cool pictures of the work that you've done. I mean, on that note, models, hair models, they are like the prime example of somebody with a lot of layers of hair color on their hair. You just never know what you're gonna get under there. Um, what is that process like when it comes to charging? Should colors charge by the hour? Should they charge by product usage? Should they charge by end result? How do you even get started? Wow, I, you know, I color correction still, yes. So for me, uh, I think it should be charged by the hour as well. Um, I'm not one to give something away. Here's why I say this. I would rather be really honest and tell them up front, this is what you're going to get into. Um, I'm not the guy that's going to get to the end and like hand the ticket to the receptionist and run to the back because I'm worried about what I'm charging. I'm very, very sure of what I can do, um, but that's years of experience. So I want to be really upfront with them and really honest with them and tell them, this is what you're going to get into. If you've layered six layers of this on, clearly we need to take six layers of this off. And that's going to take a process. So if we can do it in a couple times, then we're way ahead of the game. But I think by the hour, and a great rule of thumb for color correction, okay? and I want you to do this formula, because it's got to be different from wherever you're at. So what I would charge in Utah would be very different than what I would charge in New York. you got to base it on the market. So a good rule of thumb is, is by the hour, whatever you charge for a haircut, normally we double by the hour. Say that one more time. So buy your haircut, or a lot of times it's close to single application as well. So we would double that by the hour. So if you're doing a single application, what that charges, we would double that. And that's what we would charge by the hour. Now, in saying that, that covers no product. So if I have to do multiple layers of that, they're charged for that. So it's not like how many things can we a la carte, but you need to be really upfront. This is what it is by the hour. And these are the steps that it's going to take. And this is what it's going to be charged accordingly. So once you're able to kind of take a client from that to a beautiful, professional, polished look, you should take pictures of that, right? Post them, use them as a marketing tool. Before and afters speak volumes, right? Before and afters, I think, speak volumes. Um, but here's the thing for me, it's how you take pictures. I love social media and I think social media is fantastic. A couple things about social media though. When you guys look at social media, what's the first thing you look at in the picture? Is it the hair or is it all the other stuff that's in the picture around? Is it shot at the beauty station? Is it, you know, are you looking at the products that are on the station? Is it the family pictures on the mirrors? If her nails are showing. If her nails are showing. What's her outfit, polishes. right? All of that. So I think if you're going to do before and afters, put them on a blank wall, make it all about the hair. Make it all about the hair. You know, if you have a logo, put the logo in it. Or a hashtag. Or a hashtag. So I think it's, it's very much um, make it about what you want to project. And if you want to project stuff out on social media, be very clear about what you're projecting. Put them on a blank canvas. Let it be about the hair. It's not about her outfit. It's not about the nails. It's not about any of that. It's about the hair. Just do the before and after. So Chris, you can see the pictures behind us. This guy has entered every major hair competition out there. And even though he's won all of these awards, he still continues to enter. So what should colors learn from that? Why does it matter to enter competitions and challenge yourself and do photo shoots? Why is that so important? Well, I, I think it ties to social media. It's a great way to project yourself out to the world and, you know, and share with the world. 
social media is at the height right now and it can be a really, really amazing thing if it's utilized right. Let me explain. If you're out at the night before with all of your friends and you guys are partying and you're taking lots of pictures and selfies and that's not the place to put your social media stuff, okay? Why I say that is because then when you put a professional picture and you put that out there, which are they to decide and what to look at? So for me, I post nothing, absolutely nothing personal ever. And why I don't is because I'm there for the professional side of it. So, you know, competition work and things like that. I do it for me. I do it because I love it. I do it because I love to, to project myself out there. Um, and, and it's a growing, you know, I, and I've learned so much from not just the wins. I've learned far more from truly the losses. We don't go home from a good day and go, let's do it just like today. But you will go home from a bad day and go, that will never happen again. And we all remember that first hair color that we screwed up. Do we all remember that? <laughs> Do we all remember our first haircut? Because I can still tell you she remembers her first haircut as well. I uh, forgot to put the guard on my clipper during my men's practical <laughs> in beauty school. You don't make that mistake twice. <laughs> exactly my point, right? So Three inch bald spots on my you, butt. Exactly. So when you go through those, um, it really sinks in. And so even in the wins for me, I've talked to, um, even when I've won hair colors to the year for now, I even ask the judges, how can it be better? What can be better? Because for me, that's what it's always about. You don't stop. You're as good as the last thing you just did. You're as good as the last thing you just did. Nobody remembers what we did two years ago. They remember the last thing that we just did. So you always need to keep fulfilling that for yourself. It's not, you know, it's not putting it out there to compete against anybody other than yourself. Competition should live within, but that drive has to be there as well. Putting you on the spot. Oh boy. I like to do that. I know you do. What is one major oops that happened at a photo shoot that you learned from that we can now share with everybody so that they, they can learn from that mistake too? Did you forget the shoes? Did you forget? Did you forget the shoes? Like the, forgot the model. No. Forgot um, the model. <laughs> hate when that happens. No, I think it's communication. Um, I work a lot with teams and I think when you're communicating, uh, it's, it's got to be very clear. Sometimes perception isn't necessarily reality. So when you per you perceive that it's one way and somebody else perceives it different and you come back and that's very different, it's like, oh, well, that's very creative today. That's not quite the end result we're looking for, but that's where we're at. So I think communication in, in any facet of what we do in this industry is, is the key.